It's a stressful time. I mean, how's it going? I mean, El Pass the Rings. I mean, welcome to El Pass the Rings, Volume 98. Uh, today we're talking about Protest of the Heroes Volition. Um, straight up, where have I been? Not doing these. Uh, one of the main reasons is doing five Protest the Heroes in a row uh, tends to be a little taxing on the brain and the memory, uh, especially considering realistically, I was only really around for the first e or for the Happy Go Lucky stuff, the first EP, and then the first LP, and then after that I was like in Korea and stuff, and then doing my own thing for the most part. So. I mean, I still saw them once in a while, but it wasn't like it was when I was still in high school and university and seeing them all the time. So, uh, with that said, this will be a nice short one, uh, with really just a little bit of peppering of uh, information from, from my own past, because honestly, otherwise, Volition is very well-documented. Uh, what's the series called? Of Our Own Volition, I think, uh, is a video series for this was the first uh, record put out by the band that was not on a label in any way, shape, or form. They had like a Kickstarter, GoFundMe thingy, uh, Indiegogo, whatever. They, they they did some kind of a campaign first, uh, and they were able to raise over $125,000 to record the record and do all their merch and all that kind of stuff. So um, had that not worked out, they probably would have packed it in. But again, all of this information you don't need to hear from me. You should hear from the band in the series that they did for that. So. Uh, whoa, out of focus! Um, so yeah, not really more, much more information on that. Um, it's a very good album. Uh, just listening to it again, I think I like it a little bit more than Skrillis. Uh, very technical, but I feel like there's a bit more attention to melody and repetition, maybe more in the vocal department. Um, I think this is also the first album that uh, Rody wrote all the lyrics for. And Arf left the band shortly after the album was recorded, uh, maybe when they were on tour. I don't even know. You shouldn't be listening to me about this. Uh, Mo was not on the recording, the original drummer. Uh, he left before that, but if you look at the uh, credits and everything, he was uh, definitely there for four of these songs uh, in terms of their writing and so forth, and seems to be the head writer on at least two or three of them. So, um, yeah. So the album did pretty well. Uh, I think it actually did even better than the previous album. Uh, they had a couple of music videos. There's a specific song uh, as well about um, a show in Newfoundland where the stage was falling down and a bunch of the, the fans kind of caught the stage and like held them up and they managed to finish the song. So uh, you can watch like a whole documentary in the music video about that too. I think that's one that's called uh, Mist. Yeah. All right. So yeah, there, there's no bad songs on here. There's some serious like technical like wizardry again. Uh, 300 copies on green. Still have some of these left, uh, although we are out of Fortress and are getting pretty low on uh, one or two of the other ones. I think Skrillis, I think it's just this and Pacific Myth that we kind of have some left of. Uh, everything else is getting pretty small. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. What about some stories? What about stories? Uh, when I was Younger, I remember going on stage with them and uh, screaming along, and uh, I remember stepping on an empty guitar case at one point and falling over on stage. Uh, that was a good time. Um, what else? We did uh, four team soccer, uh, where uh, it was just me as one team, Luke as another team, my brother as another team, I forget who the fourth player was. Probably Chris Wynn. Um, and we each, because we were my house backed onto a field where there was two full soccer fields, essentially. So we used the four nets and we, you know, each person had a net, you had your own score. Um, it was pretty silly. We also snuck Luke onto the Salads, which was a team that my brother had for soccer. Uh, I was on that team too. Um, so that was really cool to like, we just changed his and said, oh, this is whoever was missing that week and, and Luke played. I think they even scored a goal or two. Uh, Luke's a very good soccer player. Uh, Luke's very good at everything, let's be honest. Uh, what else we got? Um, oh, uh, Arf, uh, who had left the band um, after this was recorded, uh, no, before this was recorded, whatever. Uh, when they would come over to my house, I remember one time in particular, Arf saying, Dave, if you aren't um, involved in music as your job, 
something is terribly wrong with the world. Well, Arf got his wish because that's what I do now. Um, it's also a pretty extensive uh, video interview that I did with, with Luke. Uh, there, actually, there's a video interview, I think it's like three parts, and then there's an additional written interview that I did with him maybe like a year or two later. Uh, I think around the time the tapes came out. Uh, what else we got? Uh, two things, I guess. There's, uh, I guess the ARF thing kind of leads into this. Um, well, I think one of the reasons why I did not delve back into this after the Skirillus, uh one was I found out, I think later that day, that uh, our mutual friend Chris Parker had passed away in his sleep. Um, I think that thing that ARF was telling me, I had before gone to Chris Parker's house and Dave Lilly's house and everyone else who lived over there in Guelph uh, during that time and we would hang out and have a really good time. So hearing that news really fucked me up um, and, you know, obviously his family and his uh, close friends a whole lot more, but um, yeah, it, it was tough. You know, Chris is younger than me and just passed away in his sleep. They have no idea why. Expecting a baby. Ugh. All right. Anyway. So now that this is kind of out of the way, hopefully I can just start uh, rolling through these out past the rings again. Uh, we'll just leave it there. Um, good album, check it out, pick up a tape if you want. Um, I love all the protest stuff, so um, this one's probably near the top for me. I really like this album. Uh, probably number three, I would say. Uh, all right, I will leave you with a track that... I guess it was when they were still happy-go-lucky, Luke came over to my house, and I was like, Luke, bring your guitar over, we'll jam! Uh, and we, like, wrote part of a song, so uh, let's, let's listen to that. Huh?